Listen guys, if there's one person that wants Bitcoin to actually have a mover to the upside, it is probably going to be me. Because the thing is, is I bought Bitcoin at 17,000 US dollar. I'm all in the Bitcoin at 17,000 US dollar. I still have a big stack of Bitcoin that I accumulated back in 2017. I have a big stack of Bitcoin that I accumulated back in 2020 during the March crash. Look, if Bitcoin is gonna go to 100,000 US dollar tomorrow, I'm gonna be extremely happy. And the thing is, is I'm not bearish because I don't wanna be a bearish person because I want Bitcoin to crash because I don't have a bunch of Bitcoin or because I hate Bitcoin or because I like altcoins. It doesn't really matter. But the thing is, I wanna be very, very realistic right now. And if I look at the stock market, well, yeah, I'm um, I'm gonna have a little bit, be, be a little bit cautious here right now because I see a lot of people right now bullish. And even though I, I'm very bullish here in the long term and I'm especially here for next year after the halving, I'm gonna be a bit cautious because what is right now going on could potentially still spark here. Yes, a move to the downside. And first of all, again, the thing is a lot of the people that are watching this video, probably everybody that's watching this video, I don't wanna flex, I wanna be humble. I don't generally talk about how much Bitcoin I have, but I probably have more Bitcoin than most of the people here watching. So if there's someone which is gonna benefit here from a Bitcoin move to the upside, it's, it's probably going to be me. But I'm also gonna have to be very honest and the banking crisis is just, potentially going to, I'm, I'm just gonna first of all start here with the stock market, okay? If you're gonna look here at the stock market, the stock market is taking out here the lows or it's probably gonna take out the lows. I actually had this prediction here back last year in 2022 November, yes. Not only did I predict here the bottom of the bear market, I as well pretty much predicted already here the stock market move here. Now, we did see a little bit of a delay, even though I expected that the stock market crash was gonna start a little bit earlier. You can pr pretty much see here, since the bottom here, I turned very, very bullish. Actually, before I actually made this chart, I was as well bullish here because we saw actually a record amount of shorts being opened here around, um, it was probably around like October, so about one year ago. And I said like, this is probably gonna be the bottom. We're probably gonna go here to the previous high, uh, which is pretty much what we did here. And then after that, we're gonna have a crash. We're gonna go here to the lows. The Fed is gonna step in, print a bunch of money, and then we're gonna see the stock market eventually have a recovery back to the upside, very similar to the 2020 March crash that we saw here during the pandemic. So anyway, what we saw here during the pandemic, of course, is that the stock market had a move to the downside, but Bitcoin as well had the stock, uh, Bitcoin as well here had this move right over here to the downside. So this was as well here before the halving, a very similar period to where we're trading right now. So this was about two months here before the halving. The halving is gonna take place here in around April. And currently we're trading about like three months here before the halving. So it's, it's quite similar. So two months before the halving, that's when the March crash happened. And now again, we're like three months here before the halving. Could this potentially result in, you know, the stock market having a crash here to the downside and then Bitcoin following as well. And then eventually Fed's gonna come in, print a bunch of money. Are we gonna see a very, very similar structure as we saw back here in 2019? Now, the thing is, is first of all, we have a bunch of inflation right now and the interest rates are still spiking here to the upside. And this is potentially going to break the banks. And if the banks are going to break and the banks are gonna be forced to liquidate a bunch of assets, then that is that could definitely spike some kind of a global run here on the cash. And that's gonna be very, very negative for Bitcoin. A lot of people right now speculating as well here, this Twitter user, Michael A. Gate CFA, he's speculating as well that even the circuit breakers are gonna get hit. So the circuit breakers here on the stock market is if you have a big crash, correcting on the stock market, what happens is the stock market stops trading for a while, so everybody can calm down. And then after a few minutes or a few hours, the stock market eventually continues. And he's actually saying that, well, potentially if the circuit breakers are gonna get hit, then potentially this is going to go much, much lower. Now, why would stock market have a mover to the downside? Well, it's all because of the banking sector. So back here around May and April, what we actually saw is that we saw this whole banking system actually collapsing. We actually saw this bank, Silvergate Bank, which was kind of like a crypto affiliate bank here, collapsing. And then the Fed came in and they printed a bunch of money and they basically rescued everything. But now we're pretty much trading here again around the lows. And so actually what happened here, if I take out the Fed balance sheet, so this is the, this is not the Fed balance sheet, where's my Fed balance sheet? Right over here, you can actually see that the Fed balance sheet had to spike here to the upside, but now we're even much and much and much lower. So the Fed balance sheet is at a very, very low level, and it seems like the banking system is potentially about here again to collapse. Rates continue to spike here to the upside, and again, a lot of these banks, they hold a bunch of bonds. So if there's gonna be a bank run, the banks are gonna be forced to liquidate their bonds. And because the rates are so high and they probably bought the bonds at a very low rate, that means they're gonna have to sell the, those bonds for a loss. They can no longer actually give people their deposits and then the whole bank collapses and goes bankrupt. And so that's gonna happen again, again, that could potentially here result in liquidity for the dollar increasing, the DXY going up, stocks going down, 
gold going down and Bitcoin collapsing here potentially as well. Now, this is going to be a very, very bear scenario. And I'm not 100% saying that it's going to happen, but it is going to be a realistic scenario. And again, if Bitcoin is going to go move here to 100,000 US dollar, and I'm going to be, well, first of all, it's not a prediction. I'm just basically putting out this warning. But let's say even Bitcoin is going to go to 100,000 US dollar tomorrow. I'm going to be very, very happy. I'm going to be dancing on the table. I'm going to be the richest guy. I'm going to buy a nice apartment and I'm going to live my life in peace. But the thing is, is it doesn't tend to be that easy that often. And I just want to be cautious. Again, the thing is, if I want to make a bunch of money here, I'm not going to make these kind of YouTube videos. I'm going to promote altcoins. I'm going to talk about altcoins. I'm going to promote scamming exchanges. I'm going to farm affiliate links. No, I'm not doing any of that. I'm trying to help people. I want people to actually make money. I want people to succeed. I want people to live the lifestyle that I'm living because guess what? I've never even had a job. I'm traveling around the world. I'm enjoying my life. I want people to succeed. But if you're going to be bullish right now, you're going to say Bitcoin is going to go to 50k tomorrow, or Bitcoin is going to have you know have a pump to 100,000 US dollar. You're just you're just not that realistic. And even though it's in the realm of possibilities, I definitely don't think that it's going to be that easy as buying right now and just waiting for the halving to take place and make a bunch of money. It's pretty much never happened like that before. Bitcoin always tends to do something that nobody expects, and maybe that is actually going to start right now. Um, yeah, it seems like Arthur Hayes was as well talking here about the banking crisis. And uh, this guy as well here, he was the co-founder here of BitMEX, or he was the founder of BitMEX. And actually talking about BitMEX, we have this very interesting chart. Where is my chart right now? Right off here. This is the BitMEX funding rate. And I have not talked about the BitMEX funding rate in a long time. But back here in 2019, what you can actually see here, if I go here, go here to the Bitstem chart, what you can actually see here is that the BitMEX funding rate was a very good predictor where Bitcoin was actually going to go here back in 2019-2020. So when the BitMEX funding rate actually spiked, and that's when Bitcoin as well very pretty much always had a move to the downside. So over here it had a move to the downside, over here, over here, over here, over here, as well over here. This was an absolutely amazing predictor here. And when we saw that the uh, funding rate actually spiked negative, you actually saw the opposite here taking out, uh, basically playing out continuously. And it kind of continued to be very accurately. And then it happened here as well, here in 2021. But for the last like two years, it's just been negative, uh, even though Bitcoin has been crashing here to the downside. So it just hasn't been that good. But what you do can actually see is we had a small spike right up here to the upside and Bitcoin eventually crashed. And right now we're again here spiking to the upside, which again, generally, if you have this level, then that's just gonna mean here a big move here not a big move or at least some move here to the downside or at least going to be a bad move to potentially buy Bitcoin. So again, that's a, you know, a reason to be cautious. But does that mean you should sell Bitcoin right now? Well, personally, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm not selling any Bitcoin. I think what's generally a good strategy, have a fiat stack to the side. Don't invest what you cannot afford to lose. And if you have a normal stack fiat here to the side, then you can live off your fiat stack here for the next year moving forward. I think generally speaking, you're going to be fine because I think even if Bitcoin is going to crash, and it's going to have some volatility after the next halving. The Fed's going to have to start printing, printing a bunch of, bunch, bunch of money, and then Bitcoin is definitely going to move into the upside. So the strategy for me is I have a fiat stacker to the to the side that I can live off here for the next year moving forward. So I'm going to be fine for one year, but personally, in the short term, it could potentially go here to the downside. So then, if that's going to take place, I may buy as well some more Bitcoin. Why not? And then after that, I think Bitcoin is going to head here to those higher levels. So if you are right now, you have a bunch of fiat stack, let's say you have 100,000 US dollar worth of fiat, and you're asking me, Thomas, should I buy right now? Well, the thing is, I think DCAing here before the halving, let's say every month here before the halving, and even a little bit after the halving is probably gonna be a good strategy. Um, because even if Bitcoin is gonna crash right now, well, maybe you have buy a little bit of Bitcoin right now, but then you would still have a lot of purchasing power actually to buy here during the crash as well. And if, Bit if you're gonna buy right now, Bitcoin have a move to the upside, well, then you're already pretty much guaranteed going to be in profit, at least in the short term. So I think DCA here moving forward is probably the best strategy, unless you are very experienced about the market, and then you could potentially try to trade this and maybe sell some Bitcoin here on this level. But I still believe it's very, very risky to actually do that. If the stock market is gonna have a continuation move to the downside, and probably it's gonna reveal it a little bit here in the next week, then I may actually sell some Bitcoin, which I would actually say in this video, I'm gonna be transparent. I'm gonna be honest with that to everybody. If I'm gonna lose out on some potentially Bitcoin, well, that's gonna be my own fault, but I'm gonna be trans transparent about it. Right now, I'm not selling any Bitcoin. Right now, I went all in at 17,000 US dollar. I very much doubt we're even in crash that that's low is going to be taken out. Um, but yeah, but beside that, I'm just gonna have a 
IoT on the stock market is going to see what's going to what's going to happen, and if this is going to go lower, then probably in the next few few days moving forward, I'm going to tell you guys my strategy here moving forward. But again, a little bit cautious here. We could go more over to the upside. Maybe some long opportunities are still here ahead. Forty thousand US dollar would still be potentially very nice target. But again, if we're going to go there, that still wouldn't mean Bitcoin is going to break out and higher be anything absolutely insane. Then Bitcoin, you know, it's only like or would it be like a ten percent move to the upside from where we're trading right now. So not nothing too crazy. Uh, but yeah, we could still go a little bit to the to the upside. But then we still had it lower. If the stock market's going to head lower, we're probably going to see the correlation kick in. And then here in the short term, we may actually enter a bear market. But um, let's see what next week is going to happen. If the stock market's going to recover, uh, Bitcoin could very likely recover as well. So we're just going to have to listen to the stock market. So next video is going to be very, very important. Uh, but with that, I want to end this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. And hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.